So I, I think like a lot of us didn't know what biochemistry was when, before I came to UNA. So um, a big part of my life has always been sports. So in high school and throughout my whole life I've played sports. I play for the Otago Uni soccer team now. And because I was so inter interested in sports, I became very interested in things associated with sports, so like nutrition and exercise physiology. So I became very interested in that in high school and kind of tried to teach myself some things. So when I came to uni, I started off with a major in nutrition. And the first year, your first year of nutrition is pretty much first year health science. So I remember looking at my papers and being really disappointed because I had to do things like chemistry and hubs and stuff I wasn't actually, didn't think I was that interested in. I was never that interested in hard science. Um, and one of the papers was Biop 192. And so I ended up doing the first year and I actually really liked Biop 192. We had a lecture from one of the lecturers called Anita Dumbier on metabolism and I thought that was really, really interesting because it's kind of learning about how everything works in your body. And then I went on to my second year of nutrition and that's when we actually started doing actual nutrition papers. And I decided it wasn't actually what I wanted to do. So the nutrition papers at the uni are more for someone who'd want to get into maybe dietetics or like prescribing nutrition. So it was about kind of how many vitamins you should have a day and all that, but it wasn't about the why. So the reason I wanted to get into it was I wanted to know, wow, this is good for your body, like how you can use it to make yourself better kind of things. So I ended up switching to physiology major and because I had enough credits in biochem, they kind of persuaded me to do a double major. So I did my undergrad double major physiology and biochem. And I actually liked physiology slightly better, but I ended up realizing I liked biochem as well. And then I got to my final year and I realized I wanted to do postgrad. And I ended up liking the biochemistry department slightly more than the physiology department. So that's <laughs> how I ended up in biochem. Um, so that's kind of how I got there. So it was very kind of a roundabout way. I didn't even know what biochem was. And now I'm doing, so it's my first year of my PhD. Um, I'm in Sarah Diermeyer's lab, and my project's called CRISPR-Cas9 Screening to Identify RNAs as Novel Therapeutic Targets in Breast Cancer. So I'm not even doing anything with nutrition anymore. <laughs> um, so to start off, um, many people might not know, but there's actually many subtypes of breast cancer. So there's not just one big breast cancer. There's lots of different subtypes. And I'm only looking at one of the subtypes. So my subtype is called triple negative breast cancer, or TNBC. And it's called triple negative because it lacks the three common targets in breast cancers. So if anyone's familiar with breast cancer, you might be familiar with um, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2. Mm -hmm. So those are the three most common targets in terms of targeted therapies on the market right now when looking at breast cancers. And unfortunately, TNBC patients, their tumors lack any clinically significant levels of these markers, which means that um, there's currently very limited targeted therapies available for TNBC patients. And the reason that's not great is because it means that their only real form of therapy is chemotherapy, which <coughs> is ideal in the sense that it does target your cancer cells, but it also targets healthy cells in your body, so it's not specific. And so, because it's targeting healthy cells in your body, it leads to the side effects that most people associate with cancer, which are things like hair loss, nausea and fatigue, and all of that's actually just a result of the treatment. It has nothing to do with the actual cancer. And so, if we're able to develop a more targeted therapy for triple negative breast cancer patients, it'll not only improve the efficiency of the treatment, so triple negative breast cancer patients would have a higher outcome. So at the moment, they've got quite a poor outcome when they're diagnosed because chemotherapy is quite outdated at the moment but it also just improve their quality of life when they're going through the treatment, which if you're already going through treatment for cancer, you don't want to have anything else that's going to make it worse for you. So to study a potential therapeutic target, I'm looking at something called encoding RNAs. So many of you might know that RNA is a nucleic acid that carries genetic information, like DNA, but unlike DNA, RNA is single-stranded. So that's pretty much the main difference between the two. Um, and broadly speaking, RNA can be divided into two categories. So there's coding RNA and non-coding RNA, and that just refers to whether they code for proteins or not. So coding RNA codes for a protein, creates a protein in your body, and that protein goes off and does stuff. Non-coding RNA, you just get the RNA, and it never codes for a protein. So classically in biology, non-coding genes were kind of disregarded as junk DNA and they just kind of thought they were in your body and they had no real purpose because they didn't make a protein and everyone was so focused on proteins. 
But what we're actually finding now is that these non-coding RNA genes, and non-coding genes in general, do play critical roles in things such as cellular function, development, and disease. And so certain ones have already been found to be major players in cancers already. But because it's still quite a new field, and people are just now realizing that they are important, the majority of them are still unknown. So we still don't really know what these non-coding genes do in our body. And what's really interesting is that they actually make up quite a large portion of our human genome. So based on the latest gen code research, um, protein coding genes only make up about 34% of our human genome. So in the past, we focused on this small 34%, and then this big other 66%, which is our non-coding genes, that we never really looked at. And so now we're finding that they actually do stuff. And so that's why um, my supervisor's lab, Sarah Dermeyer, focuses on non-coding genes because it's quite a big field, quite a big portion of our human genome that we don't really know what it does. And so the technique that I'm using to study these genes is CRISPR-Cas9, which I think people in the Zoom are familiar with because I think it's starting to become in the curriculum. But just to refresh everyone's memory, um, the type of CRISPR-Cas9 I'm using is you have your guide RNA, which is specific to your target gene, and then my guide RNAs are bound to a repressor domain. And so the guide RNA um, guides the repressor to my target gene where the repressor binds, and then it um, represses transcription of the gene. So it means that the gene's not transcribed. So it means that I knock down that non-coding RNA in the cell. So essentially, it's just getting rid of that non-coding RNA. And then that allows you to look at the function of the non-coding RNA, because you can see what happens to the cell when I get rid of it. So my project overview for my PhD at the moment is I've got some triple negative breast cancer cells that I'm working with in 2D cell culture, so similar to what <coughs> Margaret's talking about with her cells. And I can add my CRISPR-Cas9 machinery to these cells, and what's really cool is that you can add a bunch of different guide RNAs all at once. So you can knock down a bunch of different genes all at once. And what I'm looking for is I want to know what cells die when I knock down a gene in them. And I'm interested in the cells that die, not the cells that live, because you can assume that if you've knocked a gene down in that cell and that cell died, then that gene must have had something to do with the cell's proliferation. And you may know that in cancer, the main issue is that the cells keep dividing, 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 and we don't know why. So if we can find a gene that when you target it, it causes a cell to die, then that's going to be a really good targeted therapy. And so my project's pretty much trying to find a certain non-coding gene that has an integral role to play in triple negative breast cancer cells proliferation, which down the line could be used to develop a targeted therapy.